Good morning everybody and welcome to Palm Sunday 2021. I can remember sitting here one year ago when lockdown was new and showing you my palm cross from 2019. I still have it um, because we're not in church together yet. Here we are one year later still in lockdown, lockdown three. But the good news is that next Sunday there will be a live service in church. More of that at the end of the service. I wonder how we celebrate when we're in a crowd. A football crowd will celebrate by waving their scarves. At New Wine, people celebrate by raising their arms. At a coronation, and I can just remember the coronation in 1952, and going up to the mall in the evening and joining that crowd a long way back down the mall, and waving a Union Jack. Well, in Jesus' time, they waved palm leaves, palm branches, and that's why they were waving their palms to celebrate Jesus on Palm Sunday, as we now know it. So, as we worship and celebrate God today, feel free to raise your hands, your arms, your palm crosses, your voices or whatever does it for you. Let's pray as we begin. Lord Jesus, give us a glimpse this morning, we pray, of your greatness, so that we may head on through the workaday week towards Good Friday, then Easter Day, knowing that you are our God and King, and the world's God and King, even though they may not recognise it. Amen. So let's start our worship by singing, and over to Janice. Let's sing together, Bless the Lord, O my soul.
And as always, as we come into God's presence to worship, we are conscious of our own failings. So let's confess together. Father, we can sometimes be quick to follow the crowd, quick to celebrate you at church, but slow to be known as yours outside of it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, we can sometimes be quick to follow you when the going is easy, but slow to walk doggedly with you when the going gets tough. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, we can so easily get distracted by everyday life around us and forget that you are right beside us, supporting and leading us, always. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, forgive our sometimes frail and wavering love. Accept us as we are, as you always have done, and build up and strengthen us to serve you the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's again raise our voices, and perhaps more, in worship of the King of Kings. reading is taken from Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, 
Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed behind shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you would take the words I bring this morning and you would glorify your name with them. Teach us what you want us to learn, that we might be people who walk with you day by day. Amen. The passage that we had read this morning starts with something that hit me anew. Jesus was actively preparing for what was going to happen. You see, outside Jerusalem, he possibly sent the disciples away to get the donkey. Jesus didn't just wander along and see a donkey at the side of the road, quietly grazing and minding his own business. He knew the Father's plan and instructed the disciples to collect the donkey. Jesus was in communion with the Father, ready for the next event in his life. And I know certainly in my life, I used to be someone who went to services, meetings, even perhaps to see people, without really preparing and listening to God for what he might, might want to say, either through me or to me. And I just ask us each the question, are we people who are prepared for what God wants to do in and through us? But on with the passage. Jesus tells his disciples to go and find a colt or donkey. And he goes on that if anyone asked why they were taking the donkey, the disciples were to say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. I wonder what the disciples thought as they were told to do this. I know I personally might have wondered why. Question if the donkey really would be available. Oh, Jesus might be stretching things just a little bit. But they obeyed. They knew Jesus. Those disciples knew Jesus too well to doubt he knew what he was done doing. Are we all people who, as the chorus says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey? Sometimes, certainly for me, I find that what God tells me might seem a little bit off the wall. And I know that when that happens, I sometimes think, well, perhaps that's just me. 
Perhaps God isn't saying that. Perhaps I don't need to do it. We're asked to trust God in everything, to realize he knows best. Even when we're not sure what he's doing, we're to step out and trust him. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Do you, do I believe that? Do we trust God to work for good in all circumstances? We all know that God uses everything for his glory, but sometimes that makes it very hard for us. As many of you know, my brother was killed in a road traffic accident with exactly the same injuries to the skull as I had received 10 years earlier in the motorbike crash. My birth family and I would rather not have been involved in that road traffic accident for me. Indeed, the injuries still do affect me. But I know it helped my parents cope when my brother Mike died. And people have come to God through our witness for both accidents. Are we people who put our trust wholly in God? Or do we trust ourselves, our material world, more than God and his spiritual world? Mm. So the disciples did as they had been told, and indeed everything was as Jesus had said. Jesus rode on the donkey, and people spread their cloaks or branches in front of Jesus. This was like putting the red carpet down in recognition of Jesus' position, giving him the honour he deserved. And the people coming behind him proclaimed, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of God our Father. Hosanna in the highest. They worshipped Jesus as king and God. Hosanna is used to express adoration, praise, joy. And it reminds me of the song, I was glad, very glad, when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord today. They indeed were glad to worship and adore Jesus as the Messiah, God become man, to save us from ourselves. Am I, or are you, glad to praise and adore God, to spend time with him, indeed to feast on him? Do I, do I enjoy being in his presence? Am I someone who loves him unconditionally, and worships him in all I do? I know I sometimes use the excuse, I'm too busy, just to spend God, time with God. Yes, I intercede. I bring things to God. But do I give time to enjoy God and revel or rest in his love for me? I'm often reminded of what Martin Luther said. The busier I am, the more time I need to spend with God. Let's all be a people who enjoy spending time with God, feasting on the wonders of our King. I'm afraid we all know too how five days later many of those same people turned their backs on Jesus. But here they enjoyed praising God dwelling amongst them. And I'd say this is a warning to us. Are we people committed to God? Are we people who are blown by the winds of other views? Indeed, I'd say we need to be a Palm Sunday people who then, with the knowledge of the pain of Good Friday and the need for sacrifice to enable restitution with God, are an Easter Day people who praise a victorious, 
risen saviour. The questions that certainly God asked me and perhaps I can put to you in this passage are several. He asked, am I a prepared person? Do I want to hear from God? Preparing myself to be open to him and to do his will. Do I? Do you? Do we all? Trust and obey, even when perhaps we can't understand what God is telling us to do, we trust and obey. Do I worship and adore God with all my being, praising him and shouting with that crowd, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming King of our father David. Do I enjoy being with God? Was a toil and a task. And then we all need to be Christians who listen to God, who listen for God in the mundane as well as in the spectacular. We all need to be people who trust and obey in everything. And we all need to be a people, indeed individuals, who enjoy God and relish being in his presence, worshipping him, our Lord and King. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday in triumph. We ask that in each of our hearts you would ride in triumph leading us forward, helping us to know your kingship in our lives and in the world, and proclaiming you in all we do, serving and worshipping you throughout our lives. Amen. Let's sing together. How great the Father's love for us.
Hello and welcome to St. Sebastian Church Mission Update. My name is Suman Sresta and I am a member of the PCC and also a member of the Mission Committee here in our church. The aim of the Mission Committee is to recommend to the PCC on how our church members' mission investments are allocated. And we also aim to bring regular feedback from those supported individuals and organisations. So today I'm joined by my dear friends from Nepal who are working tirelessly on improving the critical care services in very challenging circumstances. We've been supporting Nepal Critical Care Development Foundation and in their work since 2019. Hello everyone, I'm Kavita Sitola from Nepal. I'm uh, a General Secretary of Critical Care Nurses Association of Nepal and uh, also the General Secretary of Regional Federation of Critical Care Nursing, SARC. And I'm currently working as a critical care nurse uh, in a tertiary level hospital in Nepal. Hi, I'm Dr. Subhash Acharya. Uh, I am a critical care physician. Uh, I have been working uh, as a critical care doctor in Nepal since uh, 2012. Uh, I am also the president of Nepal, Nepal Critical Care Development Foundation, which is a non-profit making organization, a non-taxable charity organization, which was basically established uh, to develop uh, and support critical care in Nepal. So um, you guys have been very, very busy, uh, like like all the healthcare professionals around the world. Uh, what has your experience been like dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic? As with across the world, uh, uh, when cases start initially start to increase, um, fortunately, uh, we had some time because it took like a few months for the cases uh, number of cases to increase in our part. So we were behind like three months. So uh, in, in the beginning, the scene, scene was like, the scenario was like very chaotic, not only because of the fear factor, but uh, also because of the unpreparedness uh, of our healthcare system to deal with such pandemics. Like we, we had like very few infection control nurses in the country and uh, talking about ICUs, we have like ICUs, very few ICUs, limited number of beds, uh, even inside Kathmandu, but outside in rural areas, like the number of beds are like very less. Currently, Nepal is divided into seven provinces. Out of the seven, in two provinces, there are no critically ill beds, like there are no ICUs before uh, this pandemic. So uh, there was a huge challenge of uh, trying to create this uh, critical care beds, number one. And number two was to train uh, the doctors and nurses working in this ICU. Uh, during the initial periods of the lockdown, uh, we had time where the number of cases were less. So we were able to focus on uh, building, capacity building across Nepal. Like the government also diverted all its resources to build up like uh, oxygen support, oxygen supplies, beds, monitors, at least monitoring beds. And also we worked in the beginning to develop like trainings, you know, like short courses, online courses uh, for various doctors and nurses, which was around October was the peak for us. Uh, at and Mid-October was like very bad. We didn't have any ICU beds, uh, like all ICUs were full. Uh, whole day we like, we try to, you know, like we were negotiating beds, trying to create more beds. Uh, that was the scenario in October. Uh, and then fortunately, cases start to go down uh, after that. And then uh, we had a bit of relief. Uh, but but the situation, early phases were pretty bad. People were, you know, salary were not paid to so many doctors and nurses. And, um, Kavita and um, our colleagues, we did a great job. Like we created a critical care nurse support fund, you know, like we collected the money from uh, so many doctors, nurses, or team, and then get a pool of like, made a pool of like eight to 10 lakh rupees. And we, we get, give that money to the nurses who were not paid salary. What do you call it? Like a soft loan basis, like interest-free. 
like you know like we, they need to buy food to eat and before they go to work you know so we had to do that and uh, many nurses benefited from that and then which was interest free and then later when they can you know like when they um, when their hospital pays them back they will return the money slowly you know like we we made that provision so that our nurses could like uh, at least survive this pandemic and uh, had like some money to um, take care of themselves. So I just want to move the conversation towards your organizations, really. I know you've already touched on a lot of things that you're already doing. Um, so um, Kavita, maybe I'll ask you, you know, about the um, Critical Care um, Nurse Association of Nepal. What sort of uh, projects that you're doing? And basically we are uh, running a critical care nurse training program, which is a three months uh, training program. And we focus this training program for critical care nurses uh, inside the capital and as well as outside the Kathmandu Valley, the, also for the rural nurses who are working in rural area. Because in Nepal, uh, there is no formal education and training on critical care nursing. I think one of the projects I was really interested in, Subhas, is, is um, around the, the ICU care box. You know, that's, that was the initiative that uh, Nepal Critical Care Development Foundation kind of started. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about your project? We, we developed this ICU care box concept back in 2013. When we started our critical care foundation, what we felt was the lack of resources, like the small things, consumables and available in ICU. Uh, the patient has a pneumothorax and we need to put a chest tube to save the patient, but which costs like how much? One pound or like 1.5 pounds. And it's not available. And then you have to take, send the patient family to buy that chest tube, bring it to the ICU and then you put it. Like you waste another one hour, like maybe at least. So to avoid this uh, delay in uh, patient care, uh, which can sometimes be very at the cost of patient lives, we developed this ICU care box. It's, we provided a basic supplies like this chest tube, um, or central line, or endotracheal tubes. And those patients who can afford will uh, bring in a bring by it and keep the replacement. But uh, for those patients who are uh, not affording, uh, we'll, 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 the, the foundation will take care of bear the cost and do that. And this in fact become a very handy project for all of us working in IC because then we didn't have to like, you know, wait for hours to take care of sick patients waiting for a small, uh, a small like consumable or objects, you know. So that, that was very useful. Did that and we found that um, the cost of one um, ICU care box to run one ICU uh, is like uh, around fifteen hundred pounds for for one year, you know, which was not a big uh, not a big huge amount of money. We started collecting funds donation and started this, and then from one ICU we started we started this to three four public hospital ICUs personal, and now this ICU care box we one. Uh, run this in ICUs, which are new public hospitals, where uh, the level of support from uh, government or other resources are poor. We identify that and we support those ICUs. Mm. We, 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 we call it a box because initially we designed it in a box and we send it to uh, the ICU, but uh, Eventually, it turned out to be a cupboard, you know, like full of, uh, uh, but we, we call it IC care box. But it, it's, it's like it's one cupboard full of uh, consumables and supplies. Like when it's out of stock, we go there, uh, the nurses keep the record and we go and refill that um, and, and make, keep the stock so that the, 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 card, the care box is complete part of here St. Sebastian's Church obviously we're trying to help uh, projects like like yours what do you say to people how can people help you um, I think um, in, investing in like the supplies you know like will could be one modality uh, but uh, uh, if we invest in development of a system or a process that will be everlasting you know if we were able to develop even like one person, one nurse uh, um, who is like serious 
passionate about ICU, and then if we are able to place that person in that ICU, that nurse or doctor will make a huge difference in the care of the patient. We need to train people across the region. Now, if you see, like we have very few ICU trained nurses. You know, like, um, so we started like identifying nurses from various part of the country and trying to get them trained in critical care. I think it will be very great if um, you all could support us, you know, trying to get uh, these nurses and come to Kathmandu and get them trained and then send, back, send them back, you know. Uh, they will be the key resource person. They will be the leaders there, you know, who will be working and developing critical care. So we would like, we don't have to pay them like their salary because they will be getting salary from their like hospital. We can arrange for that. But we'll need to find a spot them for them in the training, which we would do, which would collaborate with Circle Care Nursing Association and Foundation will collaborate and do that. And we can get their like training fees. We can get their, you know, like uh, in some sort of accommodation or hostel yeah. province to Janakpur, you know, like does not have a proper ICU in the whole province, which is one of the most uh, uh, populated uh, area. So there's like only one government hospital and no ICUs because there are no trained people. So I think that that could be one moralities or areas where um, you all can help us. Uh, and I think that will be a um, bigger impactful process. Because this COVID gave us a big lesson to um, and make us realize that the training of nurses and doctors uh, in critical care areas is very important to save the life of the people. Well, thank you very much both for giving me your time uh, to come and speak to us today and just uh, giving insight into what it is like, you know, working uh, as, as intensive care professionals in Nepal. I'm really, really grateful for your time. Um, and let's hope that we can uh, somehow work, work together and, um, and help you out uh, the best way we can. Okay, thanks, thanks for giving me your time. Thank you. Thank you, Suman. Thank you so much. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your everlasting love. We pray that you would help us to be kind to one another, showing each other mercy, forgiveness and understanding. Help us to share the love you've so generously shared with us. Father God, we come before you today to ask for your protection over our families and friends. We pray thanks that you are always with us and we pray that you will give us peace of mind not to worry about anything. Dear Father, we pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping policies, that they will make wise decisions. We pray for all who are affected by the pandemic through illness or isolation or anxiety that they may find relief and recovery. We pray for all the schools and the children who have returned. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to be with our schools during this time of uncertainty. We ask you to bring peace and calm to each classroom and office in school. We thank you for our head teachers, teachers and governors and the work they do. We pray that you will give them wisdom as they seek to find creative ways of supporting the schools during this time. Dear loving Father, we commit to you those we know who are sick. May you be the comfort of the people who are physically in pain right now. Touch them with your healing hands, Lord. Let your healing power flow through every cell of their bodies. We pray for the people who are hurting emotionally and suffering with their mental health in these difficult times. Give them the peace that transcends understanding. Clear their minds of any anxiety and depression. Comfort and heal them and restore them to full health and strength. We will now give you a moment to remember those who are close to your heart and in need.
Lord, you are the Prince of Peace and the King of Love who casts out fear. Please help us not to be anxious about COVID-19, but to seek your wisdom and show compassion to those who may be vulnerable. Lord, we pray for countries in our world who have less resources and infrastructure to respond to the coronavirus and those that can't worship freely. We pray for church services to return in church safely and for toddler and youth groups to resume that they will be light and support to their communities. Heavenly Father, direct our paths and give us the confidence to follow your direction. Let us become more like Christ and bear more fruit for the kingdom. In, In Jesus' name, name we, we believe, believe and, and pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Let everything that has breath. So we're almost at the end of our service and I want to highlight five things before we close. Some of you may have expected a communion service uh, today, uh, but Andrew has been off sick. Uh, don't panic, it's not Covid recurrence, uh, although do pray for him quickly to get back uh, to full health. Um, so sorry, a communion service was not possible but we hope you valued what we have shared today. I'm told there are palm crosses in the porch at church. If you would like one, then do go and help yourself to one. We do not have services on either Maundy Thursday or Good Friday, but do feel free to look, for example, on the diocese website. Um, where you will find services. Next Sunday is Easter Day and there will be services both online and live in church. For the video service,
click and join through the church website as normal. For the live service, you will need to book in the front half of this week. And again, how to do that will appear on our website. So go there in the front half of the week to book your place. There will be limited numbers for obvious reasons. And finally, may I encourage you to think through Easter this week. Probably on Monday, Jesus teaching in the temple and overturning the trade there. Probably Tuesday, a day in Bethany. Thursday, the preparation, the Passover and Jesus' arrest. And then Thursday night and Friday, his mock trial and his crucifixion. Look and mull through some of the, the passages in the latter chapters of the Gospels. So let's pray together as we close. Loving Heavenly Father, as we walk with and follow your Passion Tide journey this week, walk with us, we pray, on our 2021 journey. And may we know your presence with us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us this week and always. Amen. <laughs>